Heads, and welcome to The League, exploring the League of Legends lore from A to Z. My name is Rebecca. And I'm John. And my name is Mark. And today we're talking about the Shadow of War Hecarim, who was released April 18th, 2012. And full disclosure, we already recorded this episode. <laughs> yep. You're, <laughs> no, You're breaking decided. the illusion. <laughs> <laughs> they know, I tweeted it. <laughs> we just decided to wait until after the Ruination event so that we could get all of the extra Hecarim <sighs> lore that was surely going to be in the room. Oh, psych! <laughs> Yeah, you might have noticed our, our absence uh, over the week. It's because we done goofed it. Whoopsie, audio's hard. We messed one up. <laughs> Actually, two, but that's okay. <laughs> Spoiler, Heimer doesn't really count as one. Heim- Heimer will be a whole new ball game when we do the Heimer Near episode again. <laughs> uh well, did we want to open up with our favorite Hecarim quotes? Oh, fuck, oh, fuck, fuck, <laughs> fuck. This is my second time doing this, and I still forgot, and still don't remember what he sounds like. God, what does he sound like? He sounds like, um, like, oh, I, fo- I found the Shadow Isles. Oh, that's, that's kind of what he sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a spooky horse. He's got, he's got a million, like, post-processing effects on his voice, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Or now the blue ribbon for Hecarim. Is that something he says? Yeah. What? Yeah. Is he a racehorse? Yeah. All horses are racehorses. No. Little known fact, folks. <laughs> no. <laughs> you heard it here first. Uh, is that a certain skin? No, that's just... No, oh, they just made Hecarim talk about his blue ribbons in the fucking county fair? What? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you have to specify county move. fair. It's, that's true. He's no small town horsey. Stay there, please. <laughs> I'm so, I'm, Jesus, I'm sorry. Anyway, um, I'm not going to do an impression. I'm sorry. I don't know what he says. I would sing the My Little Pony theme for fun, but I honestly, I don't know what that is either. He ends a lot of his quotes with horse noises if you just wanted to have a go at some horse noises. You just put a lot of pressure on me right now to do a horse impression. You got this. Wilbur. Yeah. Nailed it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that really classic, timeless, before yeah. our time, even. <laughs> you know, it loops back around. It, it's now relevant to game. That's true. Kind of is. Okay, so on the Riot Universe page, Hecarim has a bio, three short stories, and he's part of the Roots of Ruin um, edgelord chart. That That's all Viego's babes on it. <laughs> <laughs> the vague babes. The, the vague Viego babes. <laughs> Can that be the name of their calendar? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Love this. Uh, yeah, he, I was expecting him to have more or to even participate <laughs> in the ruination. He didn't. <laughs> no, yeah. This, this would have been totally his style, too. He's, I know. He's so big on murder and shit. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess he gets a little... He gets, like, they throw him a bone, right, with one of the short stories. Right, because the the spoiler of Havenfall was a new ruination thing, and he was... Oh, yeah. But, I mean, that's it, right? He's He doesn't show up and and do anything cool or anything like that. I don't know. No. No, they show his potential for being cool, which (laughs) I feel like just makes it all the more disappointing when he doesn't show up further. I mean, that's what Riot does best. (laughs) <laughs> disappoint <Potential>. us <laughs> <laughs> yeah show us the potential for something very cool and then they're like nah wait for the mmo <laughs> here's another eight pack app champ swing <laughs> <laughs> i think we're losing it already honestly yeah okay um i'll do hackerum's bio because that's all i have notes for because i'm just recycling my notes from the last time they recorded this episode <laughs> and i'm gonna be honest as i was reading his the notes on the bio that i wrote i was like oh i forgot everything <laughs> so it's fine <laughs> that we're recording this again okay so hackerum was a lieutenant in the iron order uh they are a group who are sworn to protect the king of mystery but we all know it's a uh, camivore camivore is that how you say it i'm pretty sure i said this in the yeah that sounds right okay. yeah uh, so he was he was a pretty uh pretty vicious sword boy on his little pony, and the commander thought he uh, would probably end up being his successor. But as time went on, Hecarim became more and more bloodthirsty. So the commander was like, "No, nah, dog, you're like too <laughs> too whoopsie for me." 
<laughs> I'm doing a good job. This made Hecarim really pissed off. So when they were in like a battle later, he saw an opportunity to just leave his commander for dead. And afterwards, the Iron Order, not knowing this, uh, just swore allegiance to him. Oh, noes. <laughs> Shortly after this, the queen is old was poisoned <laughs> and the king's general who's Callista and who also didn't have a part <laughs> of the ruination event <laughs> um, she had the iron order stand guard while she left to find a cure while she was gone Diego Diego kind of became more and more paranoid and just was like sending the iron order out to like burn shit down and kill people uh, when Isolde dies Hecarim is actually the one who encourages Diego to pursue revenge so to speak like he was just willing to grieve and Hecarim was like no 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 let's go <laughs> so in case you're wondering this whole ruination event Hecarim's fault it's Hecarim's <laughs> fault and he's not even in it <laughs> that's yeah that's, that's a good point <laughs> he's literally what pushes me anyway um okay so Viego agrees he's like yeah let's get some revenge this is about when Callista returns with news of a cure which is hilarious to me the idea that everyone's like mourning and like ready to go to battle and Callista like barges down the door and she's like don't worry everyone <laughs> I found the cure <laughs> shit I don't know what Callista sounds like was that was that, that was, pretty good you nailed it that's, like a that's cockney Callista. orphan it like, was like she was <laughs> boy <laughs> done that <laughs> so all of your D&D characters <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> oh shit uh, anyway, uh, so obviously Viego just throws her in prison for this shit. <laughs> but Hecarim wants to know more about these Blessed Isles, and Callista tells him just about like a lot of wealth and the waters of life there. So they bring Isolde's body there with Callista as well, but the city's masters refuse to help Isolde. Uh, oh, that's Viego. I, I wrote down Virgo <laughs> instead of Viego by accident. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know he's not a Virgo. He might be a Virgo. Virgo <laughs> orders Callista to kill them, and when she refuses, Hecarim stabs her in the back. Fucking bum deal, Callista. I know. I, You've really been trying your best. She this did whole her time. best. I really liked Callista after this bio. <laughs> okay, so the bio then talks about a lowly custodian who agreed to grant the king access to the waters of life i could have one of you tell me who this lowly custodian is and pretend to be surprised again but i remember from the last time i recorded it who it was who is it it's thresh yeah, tell me, i forgot <laughs> it's thresh. thresh thresh is the lowly custodian you don't say yeah he's just like a a wanker like living on, <laughs> living on this island fucking uh, wanker fucking wanker so he's what's also his voice sound like <laughs> like a, like, oh, a <laughs> like a cogni orphan <laughs> shit <laughs> anyway ekram still wants to uh kill people i guess and this causes the ruination of the blessed isles i i feel like i remember even us kind of talking about this and i forget i don't know the blessed isles are all peaceful and hecarim's like but i want to kill people and that made a whole island evil it seems weird well it wasn't well, sus yeah this was more like they're really wholly restorative like waters of life and sure. like putting in this like dead body who at this point god how long must she have been dead <laughs> this gross dead body in the these pure life Poison, waters yeah. was just like oh fuck this no <laughs> i'm missed now fuck you <laughs> <laughs> yes this is um how the black mist uh is created hecarim is absorbed inside the mist along with the entire iron order and he morphs with his my little pony uh, to become the man we all <laughs> my <know>. big pony <laughs> to become my big pony man <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's now now bound to the Shadow Isles, where he patrols for centuries, because obviously he's centuries old. He's a league champion. Waiting for those moments, the Black Mist reaches out so he can kill more bitches. More bitches. More bitches. And that's Hecarim's bio. I'd say expertly done. Yeah, yeah. Very well done. <laughs> Just how I remember it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that, like the black like being banished to the black mist is supposed to be like this some kind of like torture or whatever but for hecarim it's his wet it's, fucking dream yeah he's just like man i love <laughs> i love killing people and now he just gets to fucking murder people as an undead being for the rest of eternity right? like he's that he's that dude who gets sent to hell and is like man i love heat i love horned things and i love being poked by shit this is the best <laughs> Yeah, they really threw him into that that briar patch, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's. I, I think he's he's pretty fucking cool. 
I, I like he is. I like Ekarim. It was fun to kind of revisit him. It makes me like you said, Callista comes out looking really interesting, and I'm excited to to get to her and yeah. s- find out more about. I don't know if we'll get more about that, but I would be very interested because I I remember it being that she showed up. This is a, okay. This is a little weird. She shows up with saying like, "I found a cure, but you can't use it." <laughs> It's, it won't be, don't do it. <laughs> well, don't fucking say anything, Callista. <laughs> yeah, it's like, maybe we don't need to mention that, right? Yeah. But that aside, the fact that Hecarim was able to convince her to, like, bring everyone over. It's, you know, I'm curious, was he just really persuasive? Did they just have that tight of a relationship? You know, what was yeah. going on? Yeah. I think she really... In one really... of the later stories, it is said that he's pretty handsome. So oh. maybe he used his wild. Was pretty handsome. <laughs> well, maybe. Come on, John. <laughs> 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 yeah, I like the idea that he's like kind of charismatic too, because he's a villain we don't get very often, which are ones that you like, Mark, where he doesn't have his like sad boy backstory. He's just like truly like God, I love killing people. Right. It's great. Like that's all you know he's got. Great? Murder. Like, but he's also I mean, really I, hot. <laughs> sure, sure. I, I like I both. Mean, I, I certainly like both. I like Brand a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah he was yeah. kind of the poster boy for that. I just I like it to just be mixed up and you know and, and sometimes it's nice yeah. to have someone who's simple yeah we don't get like too many of them unless they're like straight up demons or something like fiddlesticks but he's mm. not he was a human yeah and a very know. bad one variety in your murderers always good <laughs> give Indeed. me more variety murders <laughs> riot i mean isn't that league of legends <laughs> isn't that why they had to address psychic like psychological counseling back in the old <laughs> you know <laughs> In that journal of justice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. oh man. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's a good bio. It's um very short, but there's a lot in here. And I'd say it's so important to read, honestly, before the Rise of the Sentinels event that happened already. But I'm glad I did read it before that started to happen, even if I was skipping through the Rise of the Sentinels <laughs> story bits by the end. <laughs> and I didn't finish it. Yeah. yeah. I was just short, too. I know. Yeah. Oopsie I'm doodle. sure you didn't miss out on my... <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't, because I was literally skipping it. I just wanted the icons. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, folks. We'll go back and watch the videos before we do an episode on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I. God, that'll be a whole fucking thing, man. Ugh. That's going to be a real vent-heavy episode. <laughs> All right. Fuck, let me tell you. It's, oh, all right. Well, you know. But so. getting back That's to the boy Hickman's we love. Fault. Yeah, the horse yeah. boy. <laughs> So before we go on to his short stories, did y'all want to learn a little bit about old Hecarim? Yes, because I yeah. forgot. Now, this might surprise you, <laughs> John, but Hecarim John, just... had a dark and mysterious past. <laughs> hang, on. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. You wrote down two potential quotes to read for Hecarim. Yeah. Can you do me a favor and read that second one that you wrote down and didn't say? Yeah. Exact, this, th- exactly as you have it written. I will. This involves those horse noises I tried to get you to make. It, yeah. Yeah. You wrote them <laughs> phonetically. <laughs> I did. Your life is a burden. I bring you freedom. <laughs> <laughs> he literally just wrote those sounds. So Why? <laughs> oh, man. It's getting nutty over there. What the fuck? Those are our private bedroom sounds, John. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gross. Uh, anyway, he's got a dark, so, sad yeah. backstory. <clears throat> Hecarim has a dark, mysterious backstory. I have a little snippet from his old bio here. R- risen from the first breath of creation. <laughs> Some claimed that he was oh, the God. vengeful shade of an ancient <laughs> warrior. <laughs> Intent on destroying all living beings. One man insisted that they had seen him leading an entire legion of spectral cavalrymen. Others still believed him to be the creation of some hateful necromancer. While Hecarim's origin and intent were still a mystery, his destination became clear when he reached the Institute of War. In a voice both ominous and commanding, demanding entry into the League of Legends. <laughs> Honestly, I'm like I'm not even pulling your leg. I straight up forgot all of that. Like you still caught yeah. me off guard with that yeah, that Umumu backstory that you started reading me. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> My God. They really had a pattern, huh? Yeah, I want to see him ride into town and demand just random bullshit, like a Big Mac. (laughs) 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 Provide to me a Big Mac. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm taking over your city and I need a carrot. <laughs> Yeah. Now he's also part of another old lore thing called the First Light of the Harrowing, where we little learn a little bit more about the timeline of various harrowings over the years, and uh, how many kind of years apart they occur. And this is where we find out that Hecarim was first seen during the sixth harrowing, nineteen <laughs> years after the Black Mist first arrived. Oh, it took him a while to get out of there, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And also part of this, we learned that uh, in old lore, Mordekaiser was also tied to the harrowing and the ruination, which has kind of since been retconned. But oh, yeah, I don't know what he's tied to now. So I just know he's a pain in the ass. Metal. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get Magneto up in there. I don't know. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, though, John. Uh, this is kind of cool. I, I wish that something like this still existed. Where it gives it's a very nice kind of world building flavor. This feeling of like, oh, we're tracking the harrowings and seeing them get worse and stuff like that. Like, that's neat. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, does anyone want to hop into some short stories? Sure. We have a few. Sure. Yeah. I mean, he's barely in the one, right? I feel like I remember we didn't talk about it very much. Um, he is, is it, featured is in like two, two? Mm-hmm. and then he is present in several more yeah because mm-hmm. i know they link shadow and fortune on the page which is one of the ones i was talking about but he's not really that's like not his story yeah, yeah it's right? not his story he's just yeah he's you know one of the one of the bad guys in it sure he shows up so uh i want to start with uh no one lives by graham mcneil sure uh I can I can hit that one real quick i got a two Thanks. line summary on it <laughs> good that's all I, I have a one line uh yeah so uh so yeah you already got the author um Hecarim is on the Shadow Isles he is pursuing a contingent of soldiers on the Shadow Isles for some reason and he he and his crew toy with them and and run them down you know they all do their murder work. yeah <laughs> yeah it's the flavor story you'd expect it's fine yeah it's you know like I said it's fine it's nothing like crazy it's got a few good lines in it that I enjoyed. I like the one where after the, the, the chaos has broken out and it talks about like just men were trampled to a bloody gruel, which is a mm. that's nice and, and visceral. Yeah, one thing about all of Hecarim's stories is that they get um, pretty graphic, Lee Violent, um, in the way that they wouldn't be able to animate them without some... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um mm. And there was another line in here uh, that I know that we had kind of both written down, Mark, as as standing out that was mm-hmm. fun. After he started chasing them down, it mentioned, Hecarim savored the meat stink of their fear. <laughs> <laughs> it's very visceral. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of his stuff is really is visceral in, a, in a, a satisfying way, you know? There's one more line that I really liked from here where... Uh, he's kind of chasing them down, and it says that he says, no one lives, um, but that it was muffled by his dread iron helm. Which makes no sense. Right? Especially <laughs> given, like, the pictures of Hecarim that we Get see Hecarim. where his mouth is just free and out there. But I do like to imagine just that... whips out his mouth everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I do like to imagine that when he says, no one lives, it actually comes out sounding more like, blah, 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 <laughs> and all the people he's hunting are just like, what? Come, one more time? <laughs> what was that? What was that? I would just assume he was speaking another language. Or like, you know, when someone says something and you're like, man, I'm fucking dumb. That's just my <laughs> fault that I didn't understand them. They're doing a the good third, job. I'm just the third time, like, Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> you yeah. laugh and hope that they didn't tell you about oh, like yeah. a tragic death in the family. <laughs> right? <laughs> I know. <Head> nod. <laughs> Me too. Oh, man. Now, Hecarim is also featured in another short story, which is fairly new, uh, as of last month, actually, written by uh, Michael um, Haugen-Wesk. This is how I'm going to try and pronounce that one. Uh, and this one's called the, the Despoiler of Havenfall. Sure. Well, yeah. maybe I can run through this one, too, or... Yeah, thanks. I only have notes for the bio. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, it's all good. <laughs> this one's a, is definitely longer. That other one was, was yeah. very straightforward. This one's a little bit more complex. Um, 
But sure. So it's told from the perspective of a Damasian squire named Jonath. Um, he's outside of a town called Havenfall, and um, this is a little bit earlier in the Ruination or the Rise of the Sentinels event. So it's it's come to Damasia, and Havenfall is just if you look at a map like right in, right to the southwest of the you know, capital. So shit's really getting real, I suppose. And he is on the road. <laughs> Jonath is the squire, and he's stealing a horse from a Damasian knight, and the knight wants him to bring word to the capital. But Jonath, despite feeling guilty, he still takes the the horse and decides I'm going to try and ride through the mist, right through Havenfall, and get out. And as he does, he runs into Hecarim and the Order. And uh, there's this really cool moment where Hecarim uh, dismounts one of his own riders by, like, ripping the, the human part <laughs> off the horse and, and gives it to Jonath so he's got something to ride because the other one he had stolen ran off. And Jonath tries to make, tries to make a break for it. The, the you know Hecarim and his guys chase them down, and... He finally gets to Havenfall and sees that the town is just um, just utter chaos. People are just being killed left and right, kind of trapped, getting trapped in the mist in the moment of their death. And you know he runs into this this little group of survivors who kind of ask him to come with them, but in an instant they're just kind of uh, unceremoniously <laughs> cut down by Hecarim and the Order. And and, and Joe kind of seeing what's going on, kind of for the first time in the story, kind of makes a stand as you know as in I'm going to I'm going to do what needs to be done. And I'm going to try and make it. To, to bring word because no one else here can everyone's dead um, and he, he doesn't he, he charges the line and dies immediately <laughs> he did his best he, he tried it, fails yeah. he was gonna die anyway yeah exactly yeah this is a good look into how like horrifying the black mist is because I think in all the videos it doesn't really portray it and it's definitely not portrayed at any point in the rise of the sentinels well again we'll talk about and complain about but i never felt like any tension during that but to like see what people are experiencing when the mist overcomes them and like comes to their town like it's really gruesome it's not like they just all fall dead like they're like slaughtered yeah pretty slowly even i think it's pretty important to note that in most of the cinematics that feature the dark mist the, the black mist, John. The black mist. <laughs> the, uh, um, actually, <laughs> the like Lucian and Senna are in most of them, and they are uniquely suited for fighting the black mist because they have, have they have some of the only weapons in existence that can actually defeat the creatures of the black mist. Like normal weapons don't do shit. So, um, kind of, we only actually see the action when there are people that are capable of defeating it. But when you envision a town like this where like nothing they have can do anything against these legions of like basically undead creatures like it's a very different story mm-hmm. you don't get the same type of heroic fighting that you do in the lucia Sen- Senna cinematics yeah yeah just people being murked just literally sure. fighting ghosts <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a hard thing to do yeah. yeah i i actually wish maybe there had been now that you're talking about it that would have been really neat to see here as well just a moment of someone trying to because at any mm. point everybody's already kind of been completely overtaken um yeah. or is just kind of caught by surprise and doesn't even have a chance to fight back so seeing someone who could you know we who we maybe assume is a pretty capable fighter have no effect that would also be pretty impactful i would say yeah it's true it reminds me of like the olympics where like lucian and senna are like <laughs> olympians okay. and we have no way of gauging how good they are because they're competing against other olympians whereas like if the olympics had like some ordinary Joe Schmo Schlub competing against them so we could accurately gauge like, oh, this John, is actually really impressive. John, they're not going to let you win the Olympics. You have to stop writing to them. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to take Olympic your idea. Screed. They don't want it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is no, that I, I could you. be a curler. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what you would pick and you fucking know it. I curl so good. <laughs> Uh, there was a lot I liked about this story, though. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a few... The way that the Iron Order is described several times is very eerie in a way that I think would be a very cool... Would make for a very cool horror movie. Um, they talk about how um, they're like... Uh, they're, they look like they're not moving, um, but they're getting closer, and you hear the sound of them moving... And they have like banners and the banners aren't moving, but you hear the sound of them flapping in the wind. Like it's a very unsettling visual having these these things just in front of you like that. And yeah. it's very cool. 
Um, yeah, definitely. They do, however, mention that one of their undead riders is playing a horn with no <laughs> lips. And John's really bothered that, by this. I don't. I, I, no. 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 It's fantasy. He's got fantasy mouth. <laughs> <laughs> a fantasy trumpet mouth or something. This was the most unrealistic. Part fantasy of this mouth story. is definitely a part. It's definitely a name of something or someplace, right? <laughs> like a porno. <laughs> yes. <laughs> fantasy uh, mouth. Uh, oh man, that was my that's a fair name. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think this this story also gave us good color into Hecarim because what we knew yeah. about him before this was that he loved murder. We did know that. <laughs> He did. He really, really, he really loved, loved murder. his murder. Yeah, we didn't necessarily know how like playful he was about it. <laughs> like he really likes to turn it into a game. Like making uh, what was it? Jonath was that his name? Yep. Like you know, tearing his rider off, making Jonath really feel like oh no no no, maybe you can maybe get it out of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah it'll be fine. Like even mm. Jonath looking at <laughs> Hecarim offering him this like salvation like even Jonath knew he was full of shit he was like oh god damn it <laughs> <laughs> he's only doing this because he knows I'm fucking dead but alright I guess I'll try <laughs> you ever watch when like a cat has caught like a moth yeah. or something <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and they just will kill it or let it go yeah yeah yep. that's Hecarim we also get some pretty <clears throat> cool visuals of people trying to get out of Haven Fall via boat and the spectral riders are just riding over the water like, oh, no, this is no big deal. We good, we good. <laughs> and just overtaking yeah. the boats too. Yeah. Like that, the, the, the like you were talking about the, de- <clears throat> excuse me, the depiction of the, the Iron Order. They're, they're interesting kind of original visuals and ways to handle these things that make them feel, you know, creepy or, or something that you're like, oh man, it really helps set that tone of, yeah, this is the big fucking problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what else I like talking about Hecarim kind of being uh, almost playful with it is there's a moment where Jonath is is riding away and he's being in the Hecarim is chasing after him and Jonath is being haunted by the knight whose horse he stole at the start and she's got one of her ghost hands is still stuck on the reins so he grabs it and he throws it back and Hecarim treats it like like a glove slap like he challenged him to a duel <laughs> yeah this is funny yeah I forgot about that at the oh, beginning yeah. I accept. <laughs> yeah, as if he wasn't. We gonna, will fight like anyway. gentlemen. <laughs> <Right>. Up we <laughs> go. <laughs> yes, a good one. <clears throat> yes, definitely. Now, Hecarim also shows up in Shadow and Fortune by Graham McNeil uh, just towards the end of it. Uh, quick rundown: Hecarim pops out, gets fucking just rocked by Lucian. Uh, and then he comes back and invades a church where a bunch of survivors are hiding. Uh, but then Alawi pops in and then just fucking rocks him again. <laughs> and she kind of summons her, her god and essentially frees the souls of all of the people that were trapped in the Black Mist and almost frees Hecarim's soul too. And that's kind of where we see that, oh, he's pretty handsome. Uh, but he's like, nah, I'm good. I'm living my best life. And he runs away before his soul gets untethered. <laughs> Yeah. He's going to love this new Hecarim, you know? Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Is that body body positivity? Yeah, gotta love yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Mouth, no mouth, doesn't matter, man. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, it is neat that that's something that that actually seems to instill a little bit of fear in them, or the closest thing to it, right? It's the one thing that gets them to really relent in this Mm -hmm. so it's a neat detail to have for him make him nice and and just really villainous and 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 fun in that way yeah it's pretty good um now another part that he kind of or another story where he plays a fairly small part is the echoes left behind by anthony reynolds lenny um which is more of a ledro story than Hecarim, like it follows Who? a character named Ledros. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, who is <laughs> you said, not, who's not a champion. <laughs> yeah, you said that like I was supposed to know who that was. <laughs> what? Uh, no, we. Uh, I've never met this man. <laughs> <laughs> but Hecarim does make an appearance. Uh, this story was more interesting because we learn a lot more about the Black Mist here than I think we knew before. Um, so, for instance, being a soul in the Black Mist, like uh, the Black Mist is essentially just a ton of tortured souls 
Uh, the whole time you're in the Black Mist, if you're a soul, it just feels like torture. And this is actually mentioned in the, the spoiler of Haven Fall story a little bit when he's riding through the mist and then he feels like, what was it, like he was being ripped apart by a bunch of hooks or some shit like that? Yeah. Exactly how yeah. they yeah. ordered it. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so we learned that being a soul in the Black Mist isn't just being like, oh, you're carried along and you're attacking people. Like it is, like it is hell the whole time. Um, and the only way you can break free from it is if you have unfinished business and are a particularly strong spirit. Um, what the heck I'm gotta finish? Killing hey man, people. There's, people there's so many pulses. more people to kill. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, I need him to have more of a, cause that's never ending. Yeah. No. It's a good deal. No. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm curious, cause I didn't really read this one, so I'm curious to see how, like, how it phrases the idea of, uh, unfinished business because I'm, I'm totally down with the idea of like it's just a really strong will and it just yeah. and, and that you know sort of like you know again think like kingdom hearts like lingering will like that type of <laughs> shit <laughs> follow your heart it's in the darkness right, the darkness, Pull it out of the darkness it matches my heart we have three hearts they all belong to one <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Not a Kingdom Hearts fan over here. <laughs> I am. No, John is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's less unfinished business in that, like, oh, there's this big important thing, but more like there's something I want to do, and I'm strong enough to break out of the mist to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I in, guess. In which case, you know, murdering folks is plenty unfinished. Um, so when you kill the spirits that are part of the Black Mist, they just return to the mist. Um, but they don't just automatically like return to the mist and get to pop back out again. Like they're essentially banished back to the hell of the mist and have to fight their way back out again. So even if you're a spirit who's already dead, like you do not want to go back to the mist. Like that place fucking sucks. So yeah, that was, that was interesting to know. I was gonna say the idea of it being like, you know, hell smoke that's covering the land is pretty, (laughs) is pretty cool on paper. (laughs) And I wish it was communicated a bit more. Uh, um, yeah. in some way I don't know how but because again the only people we see like inside of the mist really are, are Lucian and Senna who do not seem to be affected in nearly the same way as someone like you know Jonath is I think that maybe someone like Hecram a soul who has to live in the mist and can escape sometimes seeing from their perspective I think that would be really good yeah that'd be cool um, I like that they don't have to be a villain necessarily, but they can be. I don't know. Sure. A more tortured Aatrox. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Is there such a thing, Mark? <laughs> yeah. A more edgelord Aatrox? I don't know. Yeah, Hecarim doesn't seem to care much. He knows he's strong enough to pretty much just fucking pull yeah. himself back out of the mist whenever he I wants. I mean, he's a horse. <laughs> he's a motherfucking horse. <laughs> Uh, So this story basically just follows Ledros. Ledros loved Callista, and the idea of saving her soul has been keeping him sane through all the rebirths that he has to do with the Black Mist. Um, So anytime he respawns, he seeks her out and tries to find some new way to save her, um, which kind of reminded me of, like, solving an RPG puzzle where you're, like, stuck in the same thing (laughs) over and over again, and you've got to try to find the one thing to break yourself out. Um, Or Groundhog Day. Yeah. He tries a lot of things. He tries killing the one who killed her who in this case was Hecarim, so he just, Ledros just fucking murder. he's strong enough to just murder Hecarim. But Hecarim's dead. Yeah, and then he returned to the mist. Okay. Uh, that's another thing about this, is that spirits can kill other spirits. Um, they can just murder each other and, and send themselves back to the mist, which is interesting. I assumed mm. that when you became part of the mist, like you had some sort of like, you know, maybe unspoken alliance with the others. Like you know, we not, we might not be friends, but like coworkers, you know, I'm not going to kill you. Yeah. We're coworkers. The most, the most noble of spirits are often in this mist to honor that. Yeah. That's so, true. uh, so he, yeah, he, he tries murdering Hecarim. That doesn't do it. Um, he tried letting her kill Hecarim. That doesn't do it either. Uh, he shows her a pendant that she had a memory of, which actually does kind of shake her out of her uh, her vengeance fog for a little bit. Um, and finally, he even tried letting her kill him, which actually does the trick for a second because, you know, they had a relationship beforehand, so she kind of remembers him from life. Um, and then he fades away and respawns, but 
doesn't do it long term. So eventually he decides he's been a fool all these years for trying to save her and gives up. Uh, at that point, Thresh reveals to to us, not Ledros, <laughs> that Ledros was actually right on the brink of bringing Callista back from the darkness right as he gave up. Of course. Which was, which was probably delicious for Thresh. <laughs> from that Kingdom Hearts darkness, man. I'm telling you, that's what we got. <laughs> Um, These are all stories that aren't linked to Hecarim's page, by the way, the ones that John found. Correct. He's mm -hmm. just in them. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Now, he's also part of The Princeling's Lament, which is a poem which tells the story of the original Ruination through the frame of a story that's happening after the Ruination <laughs> happens. <laughs> uh, so let me break it down. <laughs> Basically... There's a prince's wife who was poisoned, so he went to the Shadow Isles, hoping to revive her. Um, there he encounters Hecarim, who just kills all of his men <laughs> immediately. <laughs> Fucking rude. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he also encounters Yorick, who helps him temporarily banish the mist. Um, and then Yorick tells him the story of how the Shadow Isles came to be the Shadow Isles. Uh, and through this, we also find out that the prince is actually the one who poisoned his wife in order to get her father's wealth. Oh, no. And he came here to actually learn the secrets to immortality, not to revive her. Yeah. Unfortunately for him, his wife, having been poisoned by him, went ahead and made a deal with Callista for vengeance. So Callista just comes and fucking murks this dude. And then his soul is taken from him by Thresh for infinite torment. The end. That's what you get, son. Yeah, don't poison people. <laughs> don't poison your wife. Yeah, just like, don't. <laughs> the, more you, the more you know. <laughs> yeah, I've read this. This is neat. It rhymes, right? I'm remembering the right <laughs> so one. So it's poem. Yeah, that's Nature the poem, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it is cool, it, and it's a neat framing uh, story or way to kind of try and tell that story in a way that's not just, bleh, you know, here's the lore. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's neat. I like it. That is usually what I'm thinking when I'm reading a bio. <laughs> <laughs> bleh, here's the lore. <laughs> and it also shows how, like, a lot of people, like, this is probably something that happens more often, more often than uh, you'd think. It's like, if all you know about the Shadow Isles is like, oh, some some something happened there and there's just a bunch of people who live forever there, like, yeah, a lot of people are probably going to go there not realizing <laughs> that they're probably just going to die. I don't know. Look at the place, man. It's super <laughs> evil looking. You don't have to get that close. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. All 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 strong power comes from weird looking <laughs> places. That is that is true. That's a fair. That's a true point, right? I can see how people would be willing to go there. You know. Oh yeah, not... absolutely. People are dumb as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the only other short stories part of it is just Callista's bio, which is we don't learn anything new. We just <clears throat> get the same story, but from Callista's perspective. He did kill mm. her, so yeah, we get a, we get less of a good view of that from Callista because she had her back turned at the time. Hey. So. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> now he's also part of uh, a cinematic, one which I mean was canon at the time. Probably not necessarily canon anymore, but might be. I don't think there's anything necessarily in there that's not. But yeah. it's called Tales of the Black Mist. Uh, this is a really cool, basically animated puppet show. That's it's very good. It is very yes. good, um, telling the story of the harrowing. Uh, it's yeah, yeah. Its style is very much just like I don't know. Imagine kind of like a Burtony Coraline type deal. Yeah, kind of like that. Mm. Um, really unique. Like Rise never really done. Yeah, this is like the only thing like this that we had done. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Not even for Gwen. <laughs> right, uh, uh, you know the doll. God, that would have been really yeah. You're fuck oh, that been very cool. cool. Shit, did we complain about Gwen enough? I don't know. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, in this one, this dude's sailing with his wife. Hecarim pops out of the black mist, which is over the ocean at the time, kills the captain of the ship, and distracts the hero uh, while wraiths kidnap his wife. 
So the hero goes to the Shadow Isles to rescue her. He finds her body, but she's already been claimed by the harrowing, and she reanimates and kills him. The end. Rude. (laughs) And this whole thing was kind of supposed to be a puppet show by some guy who I I assume is in Bilgewater. Um, (laughs) And then right as he finishes the puppet show, the black mist pours over the crowd. Yeah. I was just yeah. waiting. It was pretty fucking So cool. the Black Mist understands, like, dramatic, dramatic uh, timing. <laughs> right. timing. <Yeah. laughs> All of the souls at the same time were like, hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait. He's almost done. Hold for it. Hold. He's almost done with the story. Hang on. That's like the one time they can be coordinated if it's they're going to scare people. Right. It'd be funny if you had to say the line twice because they missed it the first time. I said a day just like tonight. <laughs> oh, shit. That's us. Go, go. So this storyteller's in on it. <laughs> He's in cahoots with Definitely. Black Mist. This is his job. Oh, Jesus. You know, it's hard out there. Take work where you can get it. It is right. build water if anyone's in. <laughs> Uh, also, very importantly, he's in the John. Worlds Collide. No! <laughs> uh, music video. Uh, one more accurately, his his lances. It's on the ground. <sighs> ah, I keep calling hey. him a sword boy. Yeah, he's not a sword yeah, guy. He's, I know. he's a lance. Glaive boy. He's a glaive boy. guy. Glaive guy. <laughs> <laughs> glaive guy's pretty good, actually. I'll give you that. I wasn't liking glaive boy, mm. but glaive guy's good. He's a glaive goober. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a silly old. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, any any final thoughts on Hecarim before I move into the AUs and take us off the tracks a bit? Uh, I think I think I said this last time, but he reminds me a bit of I got something like Garen vibes when reading him. Uh, That's I, you know, right. He's yeah, dark Garen. <laughs> yeah, I forgot that we had we had thought about that how. For a while, at least in the beginning, Darius was kind of painted as being the evil Garen, but really Hecarim is very much like Garen gone wrong. Garen broke bad yeah, and became yeah. the glaive guy. He went from sword boy to glaive goober. <laughs> he even spins his <laughs> weapon around in a wide circle like He Garen does. Yeah. He does. Oh, man. I didn't even think about that. Oh, shit. He really is just Garen. Yeah. Um, I thought it was an interesting way. I mean, I I like Hecram a lot. You know, like as an interesting person, I don't like him personally. Like I don't want would to not meet, would, would not cards with Hecram. <laughs> would not hang with Hecram, the glaive goober. Zero out of ten. <laughs> but I will read stories about him. That's interesting. And they took something that's not a visually very cool, but not particularly unique, like the centaur looking motherfucker. Um, and they gave like a really interesting and creative way of why he became that way and why he looks the way he does that was pretty cool yeah i liked it yeah yeah definitely um only other thing uh i like that his login music is a tweet version of the old league of legends (laughs) theme song (laughs) so you know this shit's from 2012 right that's how you know that was that that short window Lulu was first. Oh, okay. And then Hecarim mm-hmm. was released immediately after her. So that was their two experimentations with having a champion and that's theme it. that was a variation of the league theme. Um, and then it went through a few others. We got various Darius, Draven, Jace, Zyra, and then we get the Diana uh, one where. Well, Zyra we has the a, original. a theme. Yeah, a yeah. lot of these have themes. Oh, okay, a lot of okay, them okay. are also retroactively. Oh, written. okay, okay. Yeah, it was very, it was very cool. But yeah, that was that was a big moment hmm. when they started getting their own original themes, and yeah, started with Lulu Hecram with just the variation of the original lead theme <laughs> before they moved on to <laughs> unique themes. All right, so quick fact before I get into these, Hecram is actually the hero in over half of his AUs. <laughs> Which they don't that do that neat. very often. Really change up like someone's. Yeah, like you often get very similar themes, Gosh, basically archetypes. Yeah. All right, thank you. <laughs> yeah, Phil Six was a lot like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. So this one, this one's neat. Uh, so first of all, he's part of the Event Horizon slash Cosmic AU. In the vast darkness of space are born terrible, beautiful things, cosmic creatures of sublime love and the unknowable monstrosities of the Dark Star. These are the children of silent gods, and they are finally coming home. And this one is Cosmic Charger Hecarim. A knight in the Queen's Court, who in this case is Cosmic Queen Ash, 
He leads his cavalry across the sky, forever expanding the outer edge of creation, bringing new life wherever his hooves fall. He's like a shooting star. Yeah, he's a good guy in this one. <laughs> That's pretty cool, actually. That's a neat premise for a, for a, a little character. Yeah, and he's also opposite his Shadow Isles friendo Thresh on this one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Call them Threndo. They are not friends. <laughs> uh, he's also in Bloodstone, set in a world of the Bloodstone, where each champion is a Bloodstone cultist. <laughs> which, which... They live in Bloodstone and worship Bloodstone and eat Bloodstone. <laughs> Blood! (laughs) And this one is not, as you would think, Bloodstone Hecarim. It is Blood Knight Hecarim. Riot! Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) A zealous sycophant to his order, Hecarim unquestioningly serves the will of the Bloodstone. (laughs) While less subtle than his masters would like, he is nonetheless effective in his purpose of executing enemies in a grisly fashion. Probably not a good guy in that one. You don't know. He said his enemy. <laughs> yeah, this, you know. I'm just defending him because the splash is kick ass. I really like it. <laughs> now, he also has a harrowing skin, which is kind of the, you know, the, the right Halloween skins. And this one is Headless Hecarim. There are many tales told about creatures prowling the roads at night, but none are as dark as that of the Headless Rider. He lost his head in a duel on horseback and is doomed to haunt the living forevermore a hideous jack-o'-lantern resting upon his shoulder we'll say this one's neutral <laughs> neutral neutral he only terrorizes ichabod crane so you know it's fair i suppose yeah he just haunts doesn't look like he's murdering who did we say was going to be the ichabod crane skin oh ichabod kane that's what oh, it yeah. was <laughs> ah that's great that's beautiful yeah that i could cool. see it with him He's got the like long hair thing. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. You just need to hide his six pack. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm loving shirt. it. I'm loving it. <laughs> no, honestly, that would be shirt. really neat. I, I don't know, just the idea of cane, a cane skin where he's like a like a, a gangly nerdy school teacher or whatever. I don't remember <sighs> what Ichabod Crane was, but <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. You got it. <laughs> <sighs> now he's also part of uh, Lancer. Set in a fantasy setting of ancient sentinels, each champion is a mechanized knight created to protect cities from any threat. Um, this one is inspired by the Code uh, Geos series, and Hecrim, if in case you watch it, is modeled after Equus from that series. Uh, so this is Lancer Zero Hecarim. A mechanized sentinel called upon in times of war, Lancer hero Hecarim is a protector of an ancient city, the last line of defense against the most fearsome opponents. Once unleashed, the damage it causes can be extraordinary, so it is always held back as a final desperate gamble. Damn. Technically good guy. <laughs> Technically. <laughs> good, good guy who maybe maybe gets a little out of control sometimes. Who doesn't? Right. right. <laughs> now he's also part of Death Sworn. At the behest of death itself, the souls of fallen warriors return to the plane of the living to claim even more souls for the underworld. They are Death Sworn. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, this is Reaper Hecarim. <laughs> <laughs> when the dead refuse to take their place among the Death Sworn, the Spectral Knight Hecarim rides them down with a scythe at the ready. In his wake, charge countless subjugated spirits now yearning for nothing more than the reaping of fresh and defiant souls. Probably not a good guy. Dope. I want this and the Bloodstone universe to collide. look like a good guy. Oh, that'd be neat. Death Sworn versus Bloodstone? (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) Set in a Death Stone universe. Right. We're the blood sworn. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, works any old I'm which already way. getting confused. <laughs> uh, I was also part of Arcade. So there are three factions in this yeah. setting. The gamers who are jumping into the gaming world, the natives of the game world, and rogue bosses who cause havoc in the game worlds. Uh, and then there are also variations within these factions. So the Hecarim skin for this is Arcade Hecarim. 
An unlikely favorite among retro purists, Hecarim has remained one of the most popular characters of the arcade era. Now he stands against the combined forces of gaming's greatest villains, proving there's no hero more noble than a rainbow-shooting chrome centaur from 1978. Hero. Superhero. And beautiful. And beautiful. Indeed. Great, Great big beautiful boy. He is a beautiful boy. Can I just say, whenever you mention that AU, I always... The fact that it's always gamers, like, jumping into the game verse always fucking cracks me up. I don't know why, but just that idea is fucking hilarious to me. <laughs> these eat, these me of Nick Arcade. gamers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You like gaming. Take it to the next level. Fuck yeah, <laughs> dog. <laughs> Power glove. <laughs> Activate. <laughs> I bet that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> God, do you remember that Peregrine gaming glove that he had for a little while? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That just, like, shit was touch wild. Your fingers together and it would simulate keystrokes and shit. Yeah, so they were trying to... League with a glove. Mm-hmm, they were trying to get that to take off. It was way too weird to fucking do, though. Right. <laughs> I, have it. I have it in the drawer right there. Oh, my God. I wonder if it still works. Uh, <laughs> that'd be great. Anywho, he's also part of Elderwood. Long ago, an order of monastic knights slew the vile gods of the old world, using esoteric powers granted by the moon and sun. Now, the world has grown dark and violent as those selfsame deities prepare their return, challenged only by the light of the eclipse. This one is Elderwood Hecarim. Which looks dope. He looks dope. Mm -hmm. He's fucking massive. Yeah. Yeah. His armor of soft-spun summer wood and rowan The stones upon him carved in a time before the old gods danced among the trees. Even now, Hecarim travels the shallow rivers and moss-flecked paths of the Elderwood, that ageless guardian who protects the forest from mankind's darkest yearnings. Good guy. Yeah. Yeah, the the EU splashes where they play with the scale are really cool. Yeah, yeah. His glaive is like massive here. It's like the size of our Honey. house. God. John. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking nasty. Control yourself. No. <laughs> no, John. You made it weird. <laughs> I was talking about his weapon. Uh, He's also part of World Breaker. I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> Set in a mythological setting, all the champions are Mesoamerican-like deities that hold the fate of the world in their hands. And there's a little poem to go along with this one. Aww. In the end, the moon will smother the sun, and in that hopeless dawn, four titans will rise to shatter the world. First comes the flood from the depths, drowning cities as they sleep. Second comes the frost that stills the oceans and freezes the deserts. Third comes the rampaging shadow, blanketing the world in dread. And when time ends... Fourth comes the final fire, devouring every ill-fated soul in sight. Now, Mark, are you going to say it or am I going to say it? I know it you, didn't rhyme. Just, I'm sorry. Just, just, just fucking say it. Uh, j- <laughs> you said it was a poem, John. We were promised rhymes. Uh, I was man. promised a poem. <laughs> Poems rhyme. <laughs> God damn it. We suck. I'm we're sorry. horrible. There, if any poets are listening to this, I'm so sorry. I, we're just kidding. We know poems aren't supposed necessarily rhyme but i like when my poems rhyme is the thing yeah yeah (laughs) anyway this au is really boring oh it wasn't your fault uh well (laughs) let me tell you a little bit about the titans okay because the flood from the depths Uh uh-huh that's your boy nautilus yeah sure and then the the frost that stills the oceans and nivia That's Trundle. Fuck. <laughs> Motherfuck. We were like, we had a 50-50 shot, Mark. <laughs> the Rampaging oh, uh, Shadow. The Rampaging Shadow. Nocturne. Yeah, That's oh, yes. Oh. oh fuck. F- I'm bad at this. Yeah, and I remember the final got these fire. Skins. The Final Fire brand. brand. Yeah. Is no. it Annie? I'm going to... You know, oh, it's... Fucking. I think I remember who it is now. Is it, is yeah, it Nasus? It. It's Nasus. He's on even on fire. He does have that fucker. one move. No. Fucking AP Fire in the name. <laughs> It's in the name. No one reads the name of abilities. <laughs> well, you don't know his siphoning strike and wither and fuck. You know, I do know wither because he says it like a superhero when he does it. Wither. <laughs> yeah. What's his R called? Does it have some? Does it have fire in the name? Because uh, none of these have said have big, fire. Big boy, big boy dog. 
<laughs> big boy dog fire? Big boy dog. Shit, yeah. Fiery dog boy. Clifford. <laughs> <laughs> now this skin is... Someone... <laughs> yeah, what were we talking about? Sorry. Just, the idea that Nastis is all would be named Clifford is <laughs> bringing such light and joy to my life. God, he said, I was thinking if he had any red skins. I guess he's got Infernal. <laughs> See, now I would believe it if that's what his skin looked like and he was the fire, the final fire. I'm looking at the splash. He's not on fire. He's blue. Yeah, blue fire. Blue yeah, fire. Yeah, that's the hottest part that's of the, the fire. Fi- that's the hottest remember, part of fire. But I remember this, this from the fire, discussion. You can't tell. You don't know that. He's just blue glowy. Hecarim's also, also blue glowy. What's your explanation for that? Go on. Universe. <laughs> Why are you world defending breaker that? Hecarim, <laughs> the third of four titans prophesied to shatter the world. Hecarim will begin his hunt when the moon smothers the sun. Oh. Riding from the south, his rampaging shadow will be cast across the land, infecting the living with dread and darkness. I read a short story. The moon definitely smothered the sun. <laughs> Don't rethink it into my thing. <laughs> oh, man. I'm almost crying over here. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is really funny. Sorry. I heard nothing after the moon smothers the sun. My, <laughs> my mind went to the best of places. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but I'm sure it was great. Thank you. It was good. <laughs> yeah. But finally, mm-hmm. high noon. High noon. From so, that game I don't play. We've talked a little bit about this AU before, but I'm going to read the background behind it anyway, because again, it's just wild as hell. It is. At the height of the Industrial Revolution, travelers began pouring into the untamed West, searching for fortune and prosperity among the unknown horrors of cruel and ancient worlds. It is a time of brave gunslingers and rotten scoundrels, inscrutable gods, and savage demons. And uh, here's some facts about this AU, in case you forgot. The New World became infested by devils and demons because as heaven was destroyed by the early settlers, <laughs> human souls can only go to hell, which has, you know, super overcrowded hell, which is allowing all the devils to come to the land of the living to join the already existing demons. Which is almost the plot of The Good Place. That's fair. <laughs> Most of the gods and angels were killed. But Ash, who is fueled by the blood of the slain <laughs> angels, is the only artificial angel ever built, and the secrets of how to build her are forever lost. So good. The fact that a uh, uh, League of Legends AU starts with the sentence, at the height of the Industrial Revolution, <laughs> is great. And then ends with a robot drinking angel blood. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's how you write a fucking AU awesome. I care how about. how you write a fucking <laughs> AU. Talk about that or the moon smothering the sun and I'm there. Otherwise. <laughs> uh, now this one is High Noon Hecarim. When heaven was destroyed by mortal men, it was only a matter of time until hell overflowed onto the prairie, bringing with it all the devils who had waited so patiently to escape their confinement. Hecarim and his black riders revel in this newfound freedom, raising everything before them to ash as they stampede across the frontier. Uh, now, he's actually in... He has one short story that is more featured on him, and then another one that he's just kind of referenced. Um, the one featured on him we talked about with Ash and Darius. It's called With Hell Before Them, um, where Ash teams up with Darius to kill Hecarim. However, upon finding Hecarim... Darius revealed that he was working for Hecarim the whole time oh, and has betrayed no. her. Um, that's just a quick synopsis, but this story is metal as hell, so you should read it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and The Man with the Grinning Shadow. Hecarim's only referenced in this story again, but also just so metal. Read this one, too. <laughs> so those are all the AUs. Um, Do you have some fun facts? I have a few fun facts. Nice. Uh so Warpath, which is one of Hecarim's abilities, is one of the only two abilities in the game that scales with movement speed. Jenna. Yeah, okay, Jenna yeah. It's the uh, other. Uh, you forgot I the last never, time, too, I will Mark. never remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I know because I play Jenna. <laughs> uh, Hecarim's voiced by Scott McNeil. Uh, if you've played Callista and she has done her, you know, binding to her oath sworn, the thing that she stabs you with is actually the black spear that Hecarim used to stab her in the back. Dark. Mm. 
Yeah. And finally, Arcade Hecarim's Glaive is a Guitar Hero guitar. (laughs) (laughs) That was a really good impression of a Guitar Hero guitar. Thank you. I thought it was more like like clicking sounds. like. (laughs) (laughs) Or much slower if I'm playing because I've played it like three times. But But yeah, that's 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 Hecarim. Yep. That's the Glaive Goober. <laughs> Poor Hegram. <laughs> he shouldn't be saddled with that. I'm sorry. Saddled. Hey! Uh, okay, stop it. That's the end right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I think that's Hecram. I would ask if we have any final thoughts, but we've done this twice now, and I think we all know how we feel about Hecram, even if you don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I think we all like Hecram. Yeah, he cool. He Wish cool. we'd seen more of him. Mm. Yeah. Okay, anyway, that was Hecram. Thank you for listening. We have a Twitter. We're at Loreheads. And we post these on YouTube if you ever want to chat there. And join us next week. Uh, we're not talking about a champion. We're going to talk about the rise of the Sentinels event and whether or not we liked it. By talking, you mean bitching. Let's just make that clear, <laughs> right? So we didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Which seems to be a very hot take. Right? No one else is saying so, that. There's so much love for this event. <laughs> we'll do a nice post-mortem is what we'll do. We'll find the dead wells yeah. and the The obituary <laughs> for Rise of the Sentinels. <laughs> we'll talk about the opportunities. <laughs> right? Who's got, where are the action items on this? 